So, um, as said, um, the talk, topic of the talk is alternative use cases um, for prediction markets. The real topic should just be prediction markets are awesome, in my opinion. All right, so this is an idea um, that has been often around. Is there a chance that I can see the slides on the second screen? Yeah. Anyway, um, so this is an idea that has been often around. We have this concept that uh, smart contracts are components, so someone builds an identity component, someone else, and that means every contract uh, can use the identity component, every contact, contract has the concept of identity. Someone else builds a general registry, every contract gets a registry. Someone builds a reputation system, every contract gets a reputation system, someone builds a stablecoin, every contract gets a stablecoin. So I want to show um, the components we are bringing, we bring to the ecosystem, and we are building a general prediction market platform, and there are a few applications I want to present. So I want to present how we bring to every contract the ability to incentivize actions. I want to show how every contract gets the ability to gather information and have has um, precise forecasts. And I want to show how every contract or every, for example, DAO has the option to use prediction markets as a governance um, mechanism. For that, um, this is the base contract of a prediction market, and it is really simple. But that is, in my opinion, the good thing. So it is simple, and it, it is also that's super important because it should be secure. It should be so simple that we can create it bug-free, because this will be a contract that potentially will hold a bunch of money or a bunch of tokens. Um, so simplicity and security is simple. Uh, is, is, is super important. The good thing, you can build tons of stuff around this very simple base contract. The idea is very simple. You have any kind of collateral token. It is stored in the contract. And then you have n potential outcomes. And for each outcome, you create a token. The token will be created. And there is an oracle that later will, um, will ping the contract. and um, and set the contract in a way that, that one of those outcomes are chosen. And then the collateral token kind of flows to um, the outcome tokens, or in other words, the outcome tokens can be exchanged or revealed for the collateral tokens. The outcome token of the, the winning outcome will have the exact same value as, as the collateral. It's important to note that the Oracle can be any kind of contract, so it can be, so the Gnosis platform will be there agnostic. Uh, it can be a decentralized Oracle, it can be a centralized Oracle, it can be some combination, it can be a centralized Oracle with a backstop mechanism as a decentralized Oracle, and all kinds of things. But now let's look at uh, some properties this brings. So again, we can, we have the simple function by all outcomes in contract code, solidity code, you put in one or n collateral tokens and you receive uh, n token of each, of each outcome. And you can do it the other way around. So you could take a complete set of outcomes and exchange it to the collateral token. And finally, as soon as the outcome set is set, you can exchange the winning outcome token against the collateral. And that brings a few um, relationships about the values um, of those tokens. So for example, one outcome token will always be smaller or equal in value than the collateral token. But enough of that, so now see, uh, now have a look, uh, let's have a look how we can use this uh, concept in practice. So the canonical example for prediction markets is to buy or sell information. We want to have an information um, for example, when will Casper be released? So we can set up a prediction market and we have different outcomes. Let's say first outcome is um, early next or first quarter next year, second quarter next year, and so on. 
and then we just create a market for those, we discover the prices, and the prices are always directly um, the forecasts. To overcome, um, to, to have good prices, it's useful to use something we call an automated market maker. So we uh, um, reserve a bunch of funds, and they will continuously create um, an order book or an arithmetic order book um, and continuously provide a price, an exact price for those outcomes. And everyone who, who disagrees with this price, who disagrees with this forecast, has a direct incentive to trade against the automated market maker and buy this trade, providing the information, the, pro the probably private information he or she has into the market, return money if, if he's right, but reveal the information to the market and make it public. So again, how would this look like in a concrete example? The event would be, when will customer go live? Could have three potential uh, outcome tokens, and we can just observe the price of those out outcome tokens and know directly um, what is the likelihood. An example we already, uh, from our live market, from already six, seven months ago was a simple forecast on the difficulty with four different outcomes and you just see a graph how the prices change and you see the property that the prices always together sum up to, to one, in this case to one Ether, Ether was a collateral token and eventually they will converge, one outcome will converge against the price of one because that will be the winning outcome and, and eventually it will be uh, have the same value as the collateral as Ether. But there are more applications we can do. So another application is create an incentive. So we do a market, we do a m create a market on something we want to happen, and then we have again two outcomes, it will happen or it will not happen. And what we try to do now is we either give tokens of the it will happen outcome to someone who can make it happen or we will sell or auction off um, those tokens to them and what this means is they now have tokens they can make it happen and they know if they make it happen then those tokens will have a value of one so for example if you want to change the legislation um, the bit license legislation in New York because you think it's not a good idea um, you could create such an incentive market Create a market, will it be changed? And obviously you should specify it a little bit more in a, in a positive way. Um, and then you pile in just a bunch of money and, and you hold the no tokens um, and you try to sell or auction off the yes tokens. You, tell, uh, you, you take the yes tokens and just do a simple auction. Who, who bids something for, that, for those tokens? And that can be a very small price. If someone thinks they can do something to make it happen, they should buy those tokens at a le very little price, make it happen, and then reveal it against um, the full collateral. If, if they buy those tokens, and they cannot manage um, to make it happen, well, in the end, you will, you will kind of win the, you will, win the money um, you sold it for, your money will be, you have a little bit more money and you just put it into the next prediction market. In fact, you can already set up a contract who would repeatedly do this until it is achieved. So you put your money really to work. So you put your money in a contract and it will constantly create an incentive until it is done. Another one, next application you can do is, is hedging. A hedge or insurance is basically a bet. A bet is um, bet, insurance, same thing. So uh, fire insurance is basically a head, uh, bet that your uh, house will burn down. If it does, you win a bunch of money. If not, your, um, the amount, your, your premium is lost. Concrete example, um, and, and this has been implemented, um, I like I li like this a lot. Uh, is this flight insurance market? So you predict whether or not your flight will be late. Um, you don't want it to be late, but well, if it is late, you at least um, win the prediction. Again, will my flight be late? So and how how you do it or how you set it up? Um, you just bring, for example, ten units, and the insurance company brings in 90 units. Together, those 100 units 
by 100 tokens of yes, 100 tokens of no. You, as a, as a person who wants to insure yourself, you get all the yes tokens. Uh, the insurance gets all the no tokens. If it happens, well, then this 100 yes tokens will be worth 100 Ether. In, in the case of no, the insurance company wins. But look, let's have a look um, into this um, insurance example a little bit more in detail. There are problems, there are challenges. So a big problem is that the insurance company would bring up the full collateral. And no insurance in the world can upfront pay all potential claims. So that's, that's not really an option. Or to put it different, it's easy to build trustless systems if you have unlimited capital. We don't have unlimited capital, so we have uh, to come up with smarter solutions. But what you can do is you take a bunch of those of those no tokens and and create a basket of them. So the insurance company usually has a bunch of those no tokens. You create a basket of them, and then you can zo use those as a collateral for for ev for future events. So for example, insurance against earthquake in San Francisco. You take um, the no tokens of other insurances as as a basket for this collateral. But what you not should do is use a token that might be related, or where the likelihood of, of this happening might be related. So a flood in San Francisco is potentially related to an earthquake in San Francisco, so that's not a good idea. We will go uh, into that in more detail. This general concept is if the collateral is somehow related to the, to the event, then you need to be more careful. For example, this prediction market would not make any sense. If you predict uh, that the value of Ether is zero, but you use Ether as a collateral, who would bet on yes? So you bet on yes, you win a bunch of Ether if it happens, but they are worth zero. So that doesn't make sense. But you can set it up in a way that it makes sense. So you can set it up that you use those tokens as a collateral for the next event. And what this, um, what this is in effect, that you do here a prediction that this outcome and that outcome, that outcome happens. So concrete example, event A, event B, um, and essentially if you buy tokens of event B, you do a prediction that A1 happens and B1 happens. And here comes more interesting stuff. So here, by setting up those markets, you can see whether or not there's a relation between event A and event B. If there's no relation between the two, then the ratio between BA1 and BA2 should be the same as the ratio between B2, A2 and B, well, yeah, B, uh, B, B1, A2 and B2, A2. So, simple example, will the sun shine tomorrow will the and will the price of Ether be above $20 in, let's say, two months. Um, that's potentially, or I, I, I'm pretty sure that is an independent event. If you would do the th same thing as Poloniex would get hacked, it's probably not an independent event. And you would see, uh, in this case, that the ratio here is, is different. So pretty sure if Poloniex gets hacked, then the likelihood here is smaller that it will be um, bigger than twenty dollars. So again, for the predict um, for this idea of using a basket as a collateral for insurances, all the ev uh, events, the event tokens on the basket, in the basket should be independent, and you have a way to measure the independence with this uh, concept. Now we can use. The next application you can use for prediction markets is to use more or less this concept of doing predictions on the effect of a potential event um, for governance. So the concept, there's a general step-by-step -step concept how you can leverage a prediction market uh, to govern your DAO, your smart contract. First of all, you need a continuous market on some measurable objective 
of your DAO. So something like maximize the revenue, maximize the token, the value of the token, something like that. And then you can have a proposal system. Anyone could make a proposal or maybe a group of people could make a proposal. And as soon as someone does a proposal, you create those two markets. First, will the proposal be implemented? Yes, no. And then second step, how likely is it that we achieve our objective? And you can directly measure or you, you allow trading for a bunch of time, you potentially um, set up an automated market maker to get continuous uh, price information. And then the contract could automatically implement the decision that will maximize the forecast for, um, for your objective. So in the example of Gnosis, we want to have a, a fund for Gnosis that will um, finance things that get built on top of Gnosis. So our simple objective for the Gnosis platform, we want to maximize the, the volume on the platform. And then there could be the idea, well, maybe we should uh, fund this sports betting interface. Um, and we set up this market. And we can observe, we can directly see from the prices, will it help our objective? And if it does, we automatically implement it. There are a few things we want to measure and um, observe before we actually implement it. So we will be careful in Gnosis. We will not directly use um, Futaki. We will first use the method with some more human control, but eventually, if we go through those steps, we, yeah, it, it would be our goal to completely um, have it governed by Futaki. So we need first to make sure that indeed those forecasts on this objective um, performance indicator are good. And then the next step would be that we can do good forecasts uh, under those conditions. And then what about how difficult or how easy is it to manipulate? And act actually, we have a, send of, a set of um, experiments that we will start as soon as our security audit is done, and we will create incentives for someone to break the system, to manipulate a market, and we will see how resilient markets are. Because if you automatically make decisions based on markets, then of, of course it should not be possible to manipulate it. So the ultimate test, or, or the ultimate test before we would use um, Futaki for, for Gnosis would be something like, can we beat AlphaGo? So can we do um, a Futaki mechanism that is capable of aggregating all available information in a way that it can beat the best current machine learning um, approach? So you could set it up in a way that you always ask the question, will we win the game? And then what, what should be our next move? And we have a bunch of moves. And we are again observe the market, which move will lead to the highest chance of winning the game. All right. Tonight, uh, or meet us tonight for drinks. Join our um, WeChat, Slack, uh, WeChat group or just on on Slack, and let's continue the conversation about prediction markets. Thank you. <laughs>